I'm not scared. That's the question. Um, what more can they do to me? There's so much more to tell. I'm not going to be deterred. For Krima Media's Polite Martin Joaquinu, joining me is former Posasa Chief Operating Officer Angelo Agritzi. He's here to discuss his latest book, Surviving the Beast. You state in the book that uh, in your first book, we included a lot of details about that capture, a perpetrated yes. by Bosasa. But then you said some of the stuff was quite explosive. The manuscript had to be taken to two sets of lawyers to make sure that everything, you know, was not defamatory and, and things like that. And the lawyers right. did, in fact, uh, like clear the manuscript. But at the last minute, your publisher, who you'd not name in the book, pulled out of you know, the whole deal. What is your yes. that? Do you think they were bullied into that course of action? You know, NB publishers, I had an arrangement and uh, agreement with them with uh, NB publishers, um, whether or not there is any conspiracy theory behind that, Martin, I don't want to presume that. Uh, I think that um, the book was pretty explosive. You must remember it went to bestseller status within four days. So everything that was contained in the book was factual. It had actually gone through three legal reviews. It had gone through the NB publishers legal review, and it had gone through my personal attorney's as well, and any publishers then sent it to a third attorney uh, to actually review it as well. And they then took out 10,000 words of what they thought was very litigious information, and it was related specifically to Kevin Wakeford and to George Papadakis, who was the consultant to SARS. You know, they took out the 10,000 words. At that stage, Martin, I was, you know, I was, I'd just been in hospital. Um, and I'd come out, and it was the 14th of October, and I decided, you know, let the book go ahead as it is. I wasn't happy with him taking out the words, but I just said, well, let's let it go ahead. The reason they pulled the book was what they told me, that they felt that um, I perjured myself. Why uh, they said that was predominantly based on the judgment that was made by the magistrate Fenter in the Palm Ridge Court. And um, obviously, we all know that it was overturned, and it was because Judge Raka found that he had erred badly on that. Um, and that's why I look like I do today. So that explains why uh, the manuscript, you know, even though it had been cleared by the attorneys, had been pulled by NB publishers. I see. But obviously, you're uh, telling me that, you know, all that stuff which was excluded from the first book is now in the new book, you know. That's uh, right. Surviving the, the Beast. Are you not worried you are going to be taken to the cleaners by the people that you implicate in wrongdoing in this book? You know, you know the beautiful thing is, Martin, and, and this is where you know, facts come into it, is that this contains the truth. Okay. And nobody has been able to, to find, find me wanting when it came to my commission, to, to my submission to the commission of inquiry into state capture. Remember I said, I think it was nine or 12 days um, in the dock. And, yeah, I I being that, yeah. yes, yes. and yet, to today, there have been allegations and challenges made by the likes of Mbula Mopinyani, Dudu uh, Miyani, but then she retracted hers. I'm still waiting for Jesse Duarte and the ANC who said that they were going to question me. I'm still waiting for the opportunity for them to question me. Um, and then we had Kevin uh, Wakeford who tried to uh, exonerate himself by trying to slate me, but there's been no legal challenge whatsoever in terms of surviving the beast or my actual submission to the Zonda Commission. And that's because it's based on the truth. Would you then say that you have uh, told South Africans everything that you knew about uh, state capture perpetrated by Bosasa? Or are we, or do we expect uh, book number three, another expose? <laughs> there's, there's quite a large expose to come. You must understand that there's been very limited time 
to discuss absolutely everything in the books and, and to put them in the books. Um, mm -hmm. even, even the State Capture Commission, I mean, you mm -hmm. must remember my original affidavit was in excess of 1,400 pages, and it was mm -hmm. whittled, down, we whittled it down to 400 pages. Each book contains about 100,000 words. I would say there's comfortably significant amount more to be said in terms of special contracts and certain deals that were done. Um, you know, I haven't even gone into the Acre Sam deal that was done with the PIC. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't gone to the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. And the reason for that is, Martin, because I believe that I need to hold some things back to be able to use and to say to people, well, you know, here's a classic example of information that I've got and I've kept. And I've kept that information because whatever information I've given you, you've used against me. Let me give you a classic example. The Vincent Smith saga, I exposed all of that. And yet they use that against me. I'm holding back tightly on some of the other more explosive information that I do have. And uh, yours is the first interview that I've held where you've asked me that question. I'm asking you quite openly and honestly uh, that there is a heck of a lot more information that I do have in terms of state capture. Right. So in other words, you are saying book number three is in the offing. Possibly book number four as well? There's a possibility. I think book number four will be a, a book to my granddaughters. And okay. I'd, I'd start writing children's books because the amount of research and uh, information that I have to put into these books, and that's why I have the QR codes, which makes it unique, is to be able to, to substantiate the facts. It's a lot of work, Martin, I'm sure you understand. And Angelo, what if somebody says to you, you're blowing the whistle on Bosasa has got nothing to do with uh, your conscience pricking you, but it's all about saving your skin. You know, you realize the net was closing in on you, on all you guys at Bosasa. So that was really the motivation. How would you respond to that? My response would be very simply, then why didn't I take the 50 million rand that was offered to me? And why didn't I take it and run? If that was my concern. Remember something, I was in and out of the country, even after mm -hmm. I did the salsa. So from the period 2016 to 2019, I'd been in and out and gone home and gone to see my family in Italy and all that numerous times. And, and even the MPA knew that. But the big question is, why, if people say that, don't they just ever read on the book? And the very first, one of the first color things that I put in there is the City Press article where we've given them substantiated proof and letters from the Watson's attorneys that offered me 50 million rand to keep quiet and to leave the country. You know, reading the book, I get the sense that you are not impressed at all by the Hawks, for instance, SARS and the National Prosecuting Authority. And yet, these three organizations have got uh, new people at the helm and they're highly regarded by South Africa. So would you insist that, you know, they've not brought about a positive change within each and every one of those three organizations? I have immense faith in the Zonda Commission and the investigations teams that are part of the Zonda Commission. My question, Martin, is how many people have been arrested? We, we spent three years on the Zonda Commission. How many people have physically been arrested apart from the whistleblowers? So, so that suggests to you that something is wrong with uh, the NPA and with the Hawks? Oh, I've, I've not made any bones about it. That There are problems within the NPA. I'm not saying... Uh, Shamila Batoyo or Hermine Kuringia are problematic. I'm saying that lower down. We've seen it. They were captured. Jiba and um, Robert Jiba was captured. But I mean, she, she, she is the leader of the organization. Does this mean she doesn't have what it takes, you know, to really sort the organization out so that it is as effective as it is meant to be? Well, I can't comment on that. I don't know her workings and the protocols that exist. All I do know is that the docket that the Hawks held was given to me and I saw it, and I took photos of it when I was still at Pasasa and under uh, the establishment at Pasasa. It was given to me. Didn't me any had access to it. Mm -hmm. Didn't me any had access to senior people in the in the Hawks and in the NPA. Jacob Zuma, even when he was president, had mm -hmm. access to senior people in the Hawks. John Scumedi gives testimony. He actually has it on recording. He says Jacob Zuma arranged a meeting before he left for uh, Russia just after his birthday party, for the senior people within the Hawks to sit with Joe Gomedi and explain to him 
how they can turn around this whole thing of disaster. The question I have is, and, and this might answer your question, is how come a raid that was endorsed by a high court judge in mm -hmm. Kauteng was stopped by Dudu Mieni? How was it done? That wasn't during Jacob Zuma's tenure at all. Mm -hmm. That happened now, recently. You also write about an attempt that was made on your life when you were in Sun City Prison. Yes. If there been any investigation by the police, and can you update us you know, on the outcome at this well, point in time, if there's been any investigation? Leaders, but I've posted all the medical information on the, on the website as well, so we have facts, and we have factual proof of what has <laughs> happened. You know, you know what's very interesting, Martin, is that they found me lying on the floor, my hands were blue, my face was blue, my legs were blue. All right. Mm -hmm. So they transported me to Baraguana Hospital under mm -hmm. armed guard with 10 people armed with R1 rifles. I coded twice at um, Baraguana Hospital. The Department of Corrections, Tiang Mopu and Mumalu, the spokesperson, says, oh no, the Gucci family requested to move into a private institution. That is not mm -hmm. true. He requested, they requested that they move me to a private institution because simply Barrack could not cope with me. As a matter of fact, I've been told very clearly and, and explicitly what actually happened is mm -hmm. that there's only one bed available in ICU at Barra. Okay. There were two patients. They give the bed to the patient that survives. Mm -hmm. It's got the best chance of survival. I was okay. left on a gurney to die. I was okay. apparently gasping for breath. Mm -hmm. That was at 11 o'clock. One of the seniors at Baraguana saw me and said he doesn't want my blood on his hands. He then insisted that corrections contacted the attorneys. The attorneys then contacted my family, who then contacted my doctor. They had offered to move me with medical helicopter to LFP to a private hospital, where I'd been treated two weeks prior to being denied bail. The department refused to allow that uh, to allow any transportation to take place, as arranged by the health insurance or by the hospital at Four Ways Life. What actually happened was, I was from 11 o'clock till 7 o'clock that evening, we had a, there, there was a team of doctors, seven or eight doctors, waiting in anticipation of me being brought there off deck. They made special arrangements for the ambulance to come through the emergency um, section, and they even opened up the delivery entrance for the ambulance to come through. Mm -hmm. Martin, I write about in the book that the ambulance waited just over 10 minutes with an escort of 10 to 15 blue light police cars in that, waited mm -hmm. for 10 to 15 minutes outside the gate of Four Ways Life Hospital. My question mm -hmm. is why? I they see. then shut down the hospital for two and a half hours. Nobody in, nobody out. And escorted me on a gurney. Mm -hmm. I'm lying there. I was unconscious. I didn't see this. This is factual mm -hmm. evidence given to me by the nurses that were there, by the hospital management that were there. I was pushed on a gurney. Mm -hmm. Remember something, 10 people with armed rifles marching mm -hmm. through the hospital, a mm -hmm. private hospital, and then marching through to ICU mm -hmm. where people are lying that are in intensive care. Mm -hmm. How on earth is that possible? Is there not now, something sinister there? Now, who did you report this to? Was it to the police or to other authorities? Well, we've reported it to correctional services knows about it. The police yes. know about it because they were, they were in concert with us. Circus mm -hmm. that took I place. See. And you are saying they haven't come back to you yet with feedback? I've personally written letters to correctional services. I've written mm -hmm. letters to the Department of Health. It has got to the stage where it's over a year later, we have done an application, a, a prior application. All right, mm -hmm. a legal application to force them to actually give us some the information. They still have not come back to us. You are a whistleblower. Oh. You know, you are trying uh, yes. to assist South Africa to get uh, to know, you know, the extent of uh, state capture in this country. And they've got Correct. all this ordeal because of, of your whistleblowing. What then would be your advice to would be whistleblowers? I think the biggest problem we have in South Africa is there isn't a strong enough. We advocate that we have the Protected Disclosures Act, Martin. It's mm -hmm. not worth the paper it is written on. Mm -hmm. If you look at the whistleblowers, how they are treated in America, how whistleblowers are treated in Australia, it's just talk and cheese. So as whistleblowers form together and uh, 
People often speak of uh, the nine wasted years when, when they're talking about uh, the president or former president uh, Jacob Zuma. Now, yes. as far as you know, the state capture at Bosasa, did it uh, precede the Jacob Zuma president or did it coincide with it? No, no, it preceded that. It started happening in 2004, I believe. So it's not a Zuma thing. It is something that has always been there. I don't think state capture can be attributed to one single individual. <laughs> I think that there are certain individuals that proliferate it and <laughs> turn a blind eye to it. But <laughs> I think state capture has been there since um, Tabu Mbeki uh, was there, even, okay. even before. Uh, it was even before the ANC as well, there was state capture. I mean, there's always been state capture. So even the nationalists had captured the state in one way or another with the Bruderbont and, and that type of thing. It's endemic to South Africa, I believe, and I believe it needs to be rooted out. Now, in view of what you've just said, is there any hope that uh, the Zondo Commission is going to make a dent into state capture in this country? If the people on top, Martin, keep their dirty little fingers out of state capture and allow Judge Raymond Zondo to do what he has to do and to enforce it with a proper team around him, and the people right at the top keep the sticky, dirty, grubby little fingers out of the mix, then yes, it will work. I do believe it will work. You were there for 20, almost 20 years at Bosasa. Yeah. And you are yes. saying it started well before the Zuma years. You know, and obviously, yes. I mean, if it was your conscience that prompted you to report, you know, the, yes. all the wrongdoing, you should have done it much earlier, surely. I did. I and did. what happened? What happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I was pulled, a gun was showed to me and told, if you want to report to this, uh, mm -hmm. just understand that you'll be taken out. It was reported to the Hawks as well, there. Eh? Okay. And really off mayor as well. That was former Bosasa Chief Operating Officer Angelo Agritzi discussing his latest book, Surviving the Beast, The Ugly Truths About State Capture and Why They Tried to Kill Me.